Jody, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Narendra Modi saying that lockdowns would be really the last resort, even as these cases and death rate is surging. He's still resisting the idea. Yes, Hedy, he really has been resisting. And as you know, that last resort uh, remark is getting a lot of attention now. He had said that he wasn't going to do this because it is, it's devastating uh, to poor people. And frankly, there's a reminder of last year when without warning, the country went into lockdown and it caused this huge migration of people uh, back to rural areas from the cities. And that has been that has really hurt him politically, and he doesn't want to see that political damage done again. But at the same time, with the numbers we're seeing uh, and the infection pace, the rate of the infections just continues to increase. It's very hard to see uh, there not being some sorts of lockdowns. We saw almost 3,500 uh, deaths yesterday, and um, and there's you know the number of cases is about 350,000 uh, per day. It's really interesting, Jody, that usually we see business leaders opposed to lockdowns given the economic fallout from them. But it seems that sentiment is shifting in India given how big this crisis is. That's right. Uh, we're really seeing a lot of pressure from a lot of different places to have some kinds of lockdowns. We're seeing it uh, from the business community. We're seeing it from some of um, Prime Minister Modi's own political allies are saying this should happen. And of course, we're seeing it from foreign governments who are very concerned. Uh, also, the pace of vaccination is very low in India. Uh, it's less than 5%. So there isn't, this is not something that's going to get better anytime soon without some kinds of drastic measures is the message that Prime Minister Modi is getting from almost all corners of India's uh, leadership. Jody, in the meantime, uh, what's the latest when it comes to Pfizer's plan for exporting doses of their vaccine? Is the White House backing that move? Yeah, the White House is backing this move, Heidi, after not having really wanted to see those uh, vaccine doses go overseas. President Biden had long said he thought they should be reserved first to get the U.S. vaccinated. But now, with the state of vaccination in the U.S. going along very well, and it's starting actually to plateau the number of people who want the vaccine, uh, and there's millions of doses available, there's been a lot of pressure on the administration to support such a move. And Pfizer now is saying that it wants to uh, send these vaccines to Mexico and Canada. This would be the first time we would see American-made vaccines being exported in this way. And uh, the Biden administration today said they would support the move. Jeff Zients, who is the uh, coordinator, the uh, COVID response coordinator for President Biden, coming out and saying he thought it was a good idea and that they would be glad to see this. So this will be happening presumably over the next few weeks. That's when we hear from Canada and Mexico that they expect to get Pfizer doses from the U.S. And Jody, and we may have a little bit more clarity when it comes to vaccinating children. Yeah, the New York Times is reporting, based on uh, a talk from officials who were not identified, that uh, Pfizer is uh, looking at uh, the 12 to 15-year-olds uh, getting vaccination uh, authorization for them, amending that emergency use authorization, seeking that now after trials had shown that this was uh, that they did well in that. Of course, parents everywhere want this to happen. Um, there's you know lots of concern also in the U.S. that without uh, really vaccinating uh, children and and uh, young teenagers, that we will not get the virus totally under control without them being vaccinated as well as their parents.